This is a bacteria, one of the most simple and earliest of the life forms found on our earth. Just like all the other cells, the bacteria also needs energy to carry out its day-to-day -day activities to stay alive. For this, the bacteria uses the most common source of energy, glucose, which is in fact used by a vast majority of the cells. The covalent bonds in the glucose are broken down to release energy which is then stored in the form of ATP. But what happens when the glucose is not available or it is totally consumed? Does the bacteria simply accept its fate and wait to starve to death? The answer is no. This bacteria refuses to die and during the course of evolution, it has evolved strategies to deal with such situations. In absence of glucose, it can break down other carbohydrates like lactose to meet its energy requirements. But how this shift from glucose to lactose as energy source is performed? Let's find out in this video. The channel crossed the milestone of 3400 subscribers and also got monetized in the last month. So a special thanks to all of you for all your love and support for all these years. So the transition in bacteria's metabolism was studied in detail by two scientists, Francois Jacob and Jax Monod in the year 1961 using E. coli. They observed that when E. coli was grown in a medium containing glucose, the enzymes required for glucose breakdown were produced, while negligible amounts of lactose metabolizing enzyme were present. But when E. coli were transferred to a medium lacking glucose but having lactose, the bacteria started to produce the enzymes required for lactose breakdown within a few minutes. Jacob and Monod were able to identify the mechanism behind it. According to them, in bacteria, the genes that encode the enzymes of a metabolic pathway are usually clustered together on the chromosome in a functional complex called operon. So what is an operon? An operon consists of four components. The promoter which serves as the binding site for enzyme RNA polymerase to start the transcription process. A regulatory gene which codes for a gene regulatory protein called repressor protein. The third component is operator which lies adjacent to or overlaps with the promoter and serves as the binding site for repressor protein. And the last is the structural gene. Three structural genes of lac operon called LACZ, LACY and lac A, which lies adjacent to one another, are responsible for producing enzymes required for lactose metabolism. What happens when the lactose is absent? The regulatory gene is a type of constitutive gene, that is, it is always expressed. The RNA polymerase binds to the promoter site of regulatory gene. This binding enables the transcription of the gene, resulting in formation of repressor mRNA. Ribosomes bind to the repressor mRNA and is translated to repressor protein. The repressor protein thus synthesized has high affinity for the operator sequence present before the structural genes. As a result, the repressor proteins binds to the operator. RNA polymerase binding to the promoter of the structural genes cannot transcribe it due to the blockage created by the repressor at the operator site. As a result, no enzymes for lactose metabolism are produced in absence of lactose. The lac operon in absence of lactose is in switched off state 
and this regulation of lycoperon by repressor protein is an example of negative regulation. What happens when the lactose is present? In presence of lactose also, the repressor protein is continuously synthesized by the regulatory gene but the lactose molecules binds to the repressor protein causing its inactivation. The inactive repressor cannot bind to the operator region due to decrease in its binding affinity. The RNA polymerase binding to the promoter of structural gene can now transcribe it completely resulting in formation of a single polycystronic mRNA having information of all three structural genes. The information from LAGZ gene forms the enzyme beta-galactosidase. The enzyme beta-galactosidase breaks the glycosidic bond of a beta-galactoside like lactose into its unit that is glucose and galactose. The LACY gene codes for enzyme permease. The enzyme permease increases the permeability of the membrane for lactose to allow more lactose molecule to enter the cell. And the LACA gene codes for the enzyme transacetylase which transfers an acetyl group from acetyl coenzyme A to beta-galactosides. These enzymes work together to metabolize lactose, thus enabling the bacteria to use it as an energy source. So the LAC operon is called inducible operon, as only in presence of an inducer, that is lactose, the enzymes required for lactose metabolism are produced. So this is the end of the video, in which you have learned about the LAC operon. There are a lot more videos on the channel on topics like molecular biology, cell cycle, anatomy of plants that you can watch to clear your concepts. You can also read articles on these topics by visiting the website linked in the description below. If you like what I do and want to support the channel directly, you can do so by becoming a channel member or you can get a merchandise like high quality A2 and A3 size posters from the BioWays e-store.